I'm working on a crossbody bag that I'm making for one of my customers. And I know so many of you have wanted to see this machine in action. So it's my ProSo. So it's a ProSo 1933B and it's an industrial walking foot machine and it's got an electronic touch, touch pad controls and everything. Lots of little extra bells and whistles, which I haven't even tapped into everything yet that it can do. So I thought I would just turn the video on and you can see me as I'm using the machine while I'm actually working on a bag. So I'm about to put in a top zipper panel that's going up the top here. So this will be the opening and closing of the bag. So these will get sandwiched in between there and then again on the opposite side. So I thought I'd just show you Turn the video on and just share with you as I'm going so you can have a look at the machine in action and how I'm using it so far. There's probably heaps more I can be doing with it. Um, but yeah, so far, this is how I'm using it. So I've got to, um, for my zipper tape, I've got to get my zipper tape ready. So a zipper little pull, metal pull will be going on the end here. And then this end here, I'll be folding these back. I'm just gonna do a couple of little locking stitches on the end of my zipper tape here so it doesn't come undone. So I'll just do forward, back a couple, press foot back on the heel of the machine and it will lock the stitches, um, cut the threads for me, sorry. Didn't cut my zipper tape for me. <laughs> Just got a lighter here and I'll just seal those ends. I just put some locking stitches right at the end there. Just so that that just stays together while I'm working. Can't accidentally pull my pull off. So on this end here, I've got my little markings of where I'm going to be folding back the zipper tape. Hopefully you can see that. Just got a, couple, a little chalk mark. I just estimate on here, I do roughly about three quarters of an inch. What have I got there? I've actually got exactly three quarters of an inch. <laughs> so, and then I separate, I do the little mark so that I know I get my fold back at the exact same place. So I just separate that a bit. And then where that little mark is, I just fold it, crease it, and it starts to automatically pull that zipper tape back to the back and just press that with my fingers and hold that in place. You can put a pin in here, but I've found that usually if I just hold this in place, secure it, lift up my foot, and then I'll just do a couple of locking stitches there to secure that in place. Because I've got the walking foot, it just climbs over that zipper tape. So there's one end done. All nice and neat. Hold this one back in that same little spot, create my crease, press that back, put that in place, and I can put that under my presser foot. I always find one side's easier to do than the other. Just hold that. I can use as well to lift up my presser foot, I can just slightly press back on my foot pedal and lift up the foot that way as well. I still haven't probably got out of the habit of using my knee lift, so sometimes I forget. And then I'll go back and press all the way back on my pedal foot control. And I have now got that done. Let's cut my threads. I'm just gonna trim them back a little bit more and then I will also now, I'll trim back this zipper tape so that it's level here at the sides. Just got a little bit of waste there, not much. And I'll just snip. So, zipper tape. When I close this up, they now line up nice and neat and perfectly. Now what I've got here is I've made markings for my placements for where I'm going to be stopping and starting with my zipper tape and then this will be the little panel that goes on top and I've also got markings 
Oh, let me get my piece that I've done the markings on. Oh, well, I'll show you what I do. So with this ostrich embossed vinyl, when I run my fingers up this way, I can feel the lip on the little bubbles in the vinyl. And when I run my fingers down that way, it's smoother at the top. So I like to mark, as you can see here, top, so that all my vinyl is all going the same way. So I've done that on every panel throughout making this bag. Even with my card slots that I've done, they all run smooth. Whereas when I go that way, I can feel the bumps more. When I come this way, they're smoother to the touch. So I've got top, top. So I'm going to flip this back. And if I want to get the markings exactly where they are on this fabric that I've already made, let me just grab my pen. I dropped it. That's what that little noise was before. You can use either a friction pen or whatever marking pen you happen to have at hand. I happen to have this one. So I'll place that mark there and I'm placing this mark here. So now they are exactly in the same place and when I fold it up the vinyl is going to be going in the right direction. That's my doggy barking in the background, sorry about that. So now for this one here, I'm just going to get my zipper pulled out of the way. I can open this all the way up. I've got my th locking stitches there on the ends. So I need to make sure that I put this in the right way. Now, I need this so that when the bags open, that my zipper tape is going this way. So I need to lay my zipper tape right side facing up, fabrics right side facing up. Then I'll lay my opening end of my zipper on my placement guide. And then I've got a little mark here where I want to stop. So I can transfer that mark to the zipper tape, but what I usually do is I keep an eye out I can see it just here and I will um, use that as my stopping point and I keep the edge of the zipper tape lined up with the top edge of the material. Got my teeth at the placement guide, lay my foot down. For this one here I'm using a quarter inch seam allowance, I'm just going to use my heel back to do the foot lifting. I keep forgetting. So I'm just going to, I like to do a little locking stitch just to secure this in place because I don't want those teeth moving on me when I go to sew the top panel. So I, I, I like to do a little lock there to keep it, even though this is, I'm basting it in place at the moment. I've currently got a stitch length of three. It's like my construction sort of stitch length mainly. And when I'm doing a quarter inch seam, this zipper tape runs neatly along the side of my presser foot. And this presser foot came standard with this machine. I'll just go a bit slower, like just so you can see where I'm at. You can see my little mark here, just sticking out at the edge there. So when I get to that mark, I will stop. And I will actually do a little locking stitch. And I've just pressed my foot all the way back and that's cut my threads and everything there for me. All done. Now I have found like if you get that longer thread tail when you're using your automatic thread cutter, you can just pull that little tail back and just snip that. You can uh, um, do some adjustments in that to get that um, so the little tail is shorter. So again there now I want to make sure before I apply the top of my panel that I've got it going the right way. So top is up that way and then I can flip it back. Now if I want to sew from this side, I know I've already got my marking in the exact place so that it will line up exactly with my lining. This time I'm going just a hair over that quarter inch. I'll lock those stitches in place. I'm 
And we've just climbed up over the zipper teeth. Now this time when I've come up to this little marking here, when I get to this, I will stop with my needle down. I've got my needle set to be automatically down. Keep that straight. The beauty with this machine too is if I'm not, if I don't need a full stitch to get to my placement mark, I've got the option I can click and use a quarter stitch length to do just one quarter of a stitch or a half a stitch length or I can just do like my normal. But looking at that, I think I need about a half to get to hit that mark spot on. And did I get it spot on? I have got it spot on. <laughs> so no having to, you know, maneuver and that to hit places precisely. I've got the buttons here all at my fingertips to do that. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this zipper tape, keeping it flat, holding it sort of flat there and then I'm just gonna slide that so it's like at a 90 degree angle hanging down. It will wanna pull your lining fabric ever so slightly. And then I just keep stitching along that same stitch line. I just locked those stitches. So that's that there and here we are. I'd like to finger press this lining fabric down and you can see there my zipper tape has come out of that edge, come out of there. Hopefully you can see that nice and neatly. So really nice neat finish. Now I will top stitch this just to keep this down. I'd like to do a finger press first and I'm just going to change my stitch length to a stitch length of four and on my control panel it's just a matter of just pressing the button and I've got it set now to a four so there's no dials I need to turn or anything like that. Even with my top stitching I like to do just like a one stitch locking stitch it's in the seam allowance just reduces the risk of and not having all those loose threads hanging out where your top stitching can sort of accidentally come undone. And then I'm just sort of holding this apart and I'm using the inside toe as a guide for my top stitching and I just go along. You can adjust your speeds on the machine. do that one locking stitch again at the end and cut my threads. So nicely top stitched on there. And I can, you can see on the end there, there's the little knot at the end. And here's the little locking stitch at the beginning. There's that one little tail. And I'll just trim that off. Because I've done like locking like that, I don't need to melt those threads, but I can and just do a light little singe and it will lock and secure those stitches in place. So there's no risk of them coming undone. So that's that side done. So now I'm just going to basically rinse and repeat for the other side. When we close that up, and that's what we'll see when we look inside our bag. I've got one here that I've already finished. So, this is what it will look like when it's finished and the bag's all made up. Open that up, open up, and I've got a zipper pocket and card slots. Probably can't see in there. Don't really have the lighting set for that. Um, okay, let me do the other side, will we? So this will be like, this is the front side of the bag. And I like to just check because the top and bottom is the same width. I just want to make sure that my little swirls, like if there's a print, I like to see that they're all going the same sort of way if I can. So I can see this little swirl is going up and that swirl is going up. 
So I think I'll use that as my basis. It's sort of going all around the place, but I'll use these. Yeah, okay. So now what I wanna do is I will check, check my markings. So I haven't done my markings yet on this one. I can even do my markings of this one here. Now I know that these are, I've got to mirror them. Because this one here will be on this side. Let me just double check. This will be on this side. So I want to mirror that. So if I do my markings, normally I have all my markings pre-done. I hadn't finished doing all that before I turned the video on. Just a little guide there. And on this side, a little placement guide there. And I just do my markings inside the seam allowance. Okay. So when my bag is together, do a double check. They'll be facing that way with each other. I like to just make sure I've got everything facing the right way because one side's one way and then the other side's an opposite. So open up my zipper tape and I want to make sure again that I'm on the right side and this is my opening. And then I can line that up there. Now what I can do because I'm coming from the opposite side is I can, if I want to make sure that this end is precisely where I want it, I can start stitching from the bottom, but I'm pretty good with this. So I don't stretch my tape or anything like that as I'm going. And there's my little mark there. I can even transfer that mark. Line that up, line that up. There's my mark there. So I know I can start there. Now to lift my presser foot, I can just do a slight heel back. Check where I'm at. Pretty good. Just gonna move that over ever so slightly. So I'm just inside that quarter inch, make sure that's lined up and we're good to go. Again there, I'll do a locking stitch just to make sure it doesn't move. I need to change back to my construction stitch length, which I'm using a stitch length of three. So this should just stay in place nicely there because I've got the walking foot. I've just gone over those teeth and I've done a little locking stitch. That's good. Now I've got my opposite top panel. Make sure that I've got the top facing the right way. And I can lay this this way. Perfect. Now, this one I was using this piece for another bag, so I've got different markings on it. So I'm just going to transfer those markings that I've got to this one. There's my little markings. Or I can just sew it from the other side as well because I'm coming from this way, which I might do. And then I don't need to transfer anything. Just need to make sure that nothing's twisted. Everything's good to go. If you're in doubt, do your bag up just to make sure. They're looking pretty good. Looking good. So just make sure now that this doesn't twist. If by some chance I did sort of twist it, I can just trim off 
this little end and untwist it. I want to come from which way? I want to come this way. So that's my lining top. Bring it down. Line up that end there. Line up that end there. Actually, I will come from the opposite side because now it makes it easier for me to pull that zipper tape out of the road. I'll come from this way. I'm still on my construction stitch length of three, just lining up these raw edges, up and over those zipper teeth. Now, when I get to this spot here, I can see my little mark and there's my locking stitches as well. Let's get everything lined up. Now I will grab that zipper tape, keeping it flat, and I will just pull, I lay, keep my fingers sort of to keep that tape flat and pull that out of the road. Back down, you'll see it does pucker your fabric in that little spot there just a little bit because you've put a, a twist in it. Let's get that lost my grip, bring it back straight, pull it out of the road, hold it there, and continue on. Everything's going in the right direction. And there's my front and back now adjoined. That's the inside of the bag. That's going to be the opening of the bag. You can see everything lines up nice and neatly. It's the, this section here that you want lining up properly and this section here and no puckers so no puckers in there so all nice and smooth now what I can do is sew down the sides now I know one this little edge here this one's a little bit too long lines up that lines up that lines Everything lines up perfectly. Now I'm going to straighten that little edge. When I sew down the sides, I want to try and keep, oh, I've got to do my top stitching first. I want to keep these edges lined up when I do sew down the side. So I've got the top panel going up and now I'm going to do my top stitching on here. And again there, I will change over to a stitch length of four. Undo that zipper. Makes life easier. Pull that zipper tail out of the road. Give that a little finger press. And we'll come from this way like to try and keep the bulk of my materials on the opposite side of where I'm sewing. Just keep lifting my foot until I've got it positioned exactly where I want it. And I'm going to a stitch length of four just using my control panel and one single locking stitch and off we go. I'm just using the opposite side of my inside toe here as my guide. lay that zipper tape sort of down flat again taking it out of the road and one stitch back so I don't have to go over to the side panel here for a reverse lever it's all right here so really good ergonomics for that one 
Now our top stitching is done and we can join the side seams. I'm just going to pull that zipper tape out of the road and I'm just lining up those edges there as best as I can. Very hard to get it perfect if you're not, especially if you don't use pins. You can place a pin and try and keep that in place. Like if I do that, I'll just grab a pin. I'll just place a pin sort of where that stitching line is. Then I can open this up, have a look. Uh, pretty good, pretty good. Put my presser foot back a little bit. Now with the top here I like to come forward a bit and then I will back stitch. I'm just going back to my construction stitch length of a three and I'm going to start with my back stitch. Just eliminates too much bulk in that seam there. Make sure that zipper pulls out of the road. With my cotton fabric I've got a woven interfacing on the back for extra durability. Let's make sure there's nothing in my road there. I thought I could feel something, but it's the actual pocket underneath just near here. But it's not in my seam allowance. So I'm actually sewing just on two layers of like a quilting weight cotton with two layers of woven, like a layer each of woven fusible interfacing. Do a little lock here. I'll be doing little curves on these later. For now, I just do my straight stitching because then once everything's constructed, constructed, I check my measurements and if I do need to trim a little bit, I've got this down here. So I've got a little bit of leeway, make sure that everything's exactly the length that I want it to be. And then I do my shaping for my curve. Just lining up those edges there. Again there, we'll place, oh, we should have a look and see how we went. Lining up those sides. So you can see, we've got a pretty neat little edge there. And there, lining up those top edges as neat as I can and I'll place that pin just underneath here because I can't pin through the vinyl but if I pin through this way I can help eliminate the chance of it shifting. I should have trimmed that thread. Just pulling out of the road for now. Using the back of my presser foot coming down a little bit and then I'll just reverse stitch to lock that. And I'm just doing my half inch seam allowance all the way through. Take my pin out. Don't know why I'm reaching over there for my pins. I've got a pin dish over this side as well. And there we go. I will trim these. Side's nice, neat. Oh, I'm probably like a hair, like a slight hair difference there. And I um, hit the mark spot on on that side. So, if those sorts of things you know you like to do, now I can close up. I won't close this up actually because I will use my little template that I've got there to make create my curve on the ends. Um, but yeah, so that's just a little bit of a go-to action, just seeing my machine. Another tip that I can share with you too is like you have your maggots, magnets all around the place and sometimes you forget what needle you've got in your machine and that if you need to change or you find that like you're getting thread 
is shredding or something and you think, oh, I might need a bigger needle and you can't remember what size needle you've got in. Whatever needle you've got in your machine, just keep it attached to your machine. And I know that this now is the size needle that I've got in. I'm actually using a number 21 needle with this thread. Um, it's a 20, 20 weight thread, so it's a um, it's a pretty thick thick thread that I'm using. So I wanted to be able to see the top stitching detail nicely on this one. I'll just grab a crossbody strap here. Oh, this one's already got a crossbody strap on it. This one's finished. So I just wanted to have really nice detailed stitching. And you can see it's quite thick thread. But the machine does, top, the stitching on the exterior is as good as underneath. So your bobbin and your top thread, you can get them to sew just as beautiful as each other. This one, um, I put the logo on the plain side. Because I thought, well, you might just want to do something different. So that's that one. And these were the fabric prints that I had posted on my Facebook page and people got to vote for their favorite prints. I had four selected. And this print, this bag will actually be going in my shop. This print um, was the, one of the highest voted. And this one here was also highly voted. And my customer had chosen two of the prints as her favorites. So when she placed her order, she said, you choose whatever lining and that. And I'd picked out four different ones that I thought, oh, these would be nice. And I put it up on my Facebook page of the photos. And this was one of the fabrics that she had voted for. And then I chose to do the rose gold hardware because I thought the rose gold just complements this beautifully. Um, these are my metal logos. I, I like to keep the coating on until I've finished. But yeah, I think the rose gold hardware really suits it. Beautiful. And we've got a couple of rivets in there. And yeah, so it's adjustable. Lovely. <laughs> you can fit heaps in these. You can fit your iPhone. I've got an iPhone um, 14 Plus Pro, iPhone Pro Plus, big size. And it fits beautifully in this pocket here on the outside, which also has that pretty fabric. Let's see if you can see that on the inside just the way the light is. Might be able to move that light. See how that goes. There's the fabric inside there. And we've got card slots. I've got a couple of my credit card, like <laughs> business cards in there on one side. So there's four card slots in these. And you've got another zipper pocket in here, a nice big roomy zipper pocket so you can fit heaps in there. You can actually fit your phone in here as well. So if you want to keep your phone secure inside, you know, I don't usually put my phone inside like in the zipper pocket, but you can also just slide it in. You've got a nice big, big roomy area there to hold heaps. Anyway, that's enough. See my machine handles going over the bulky straps there quite easily. No problems whatsoever. And this here, you've basically got eight layers of vinyl there. You've got a fold over here, a fold over there, and then you've got double here. So that's four layers, and then another four layers. So you're going from four layers up and over eight layers, and then back down to four layers. And I can also do that on my cylinder arm, but I want to just give this baby a good little workout. This one, um, I will probably do this one as a drop-in lining. So I like doing drop-in linings. This one I did a turn through because I wanted to be able to check and see that my pattern was easily be able to turn through. And I was able to turn it really easily through the big zipper pocket through there. So all the seams in here, they're all sealed and all beautiful. Yeah. 
Okay, that's all from me from this video. So, just a little peek at my sewing machine in action and how I've been using it. And I'll see you in the next one. If you have any questions, just let me know.